Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can take your data science project to the next level without writing tons of code. We are going to combine the power of Streamlit and Langchain and build a streamlined application that will connect directly to Wikipedia using just Python. And if you remember the awesome chatbot application that we created in my previous video using Langchain, well, in today's video, we are going to leverage its capability and visualize its knowledge by building a beautiful app using Streamlit. By the end of this video, you will have a functional app and the necessary skill to build more. So, without any further delay, let us dive in. Alright guys, before we start, uh, I'm going to leave a link to my previous video about building a chatbot application in the description of this uh, video. Also, I'm going to leave a link to the repository for my previous video and to the application that we are going to build here in today's video. Okay, so this is just a quick uh, review or a quick reminder of what we built in my previous tutorial. Uh, we built a chatbot application using OpenAI, Pinecon, and Langchain. Okay. First, we installed the required libraries here, and then we loaded the API key from the environment variable. After that, we created here a function to load the um, documents from Wikipedia using Langchain Document Loader, Wikipedia Document Loader. After that, we created our chunking strategy using the recursive character text splitter and then we created a function that uh, display the cost of uh, embedding. After that we created a function to load or create an index in Pinecon and also to delete an index since as I mentioned in my previous tutorial that Pinecon uh, free tier allow only for creation of one index. So during development and testing if you want to create a new index, you have to delete the previous index. And here is our chat function that we created to chat with our uh, with Wikipedia. Okay, and we did here some tests. We load information about Samsung Galaxy S24 from Wikipedia. And then this is just the content of page zero, just to make sure it's working. It was having 48 chunks and this is the cost. And we dropped the index and then we create an index in Pinecon. We called it Wikipedia document. And here's a function that allows us to continuously chat with uh, our uh, with Wikipedia. And we ask here some question like when was Samsung Galaxy S24 release? And it says January 21, 24. And here when we ask which chipset it is using without mentioning the name of Samsung Galaxy S24, to test the context and memory, it was able to understand that we are talking about Galaxy S24 Ultra. Okay, we are going to use this function in our um, chatbot application that we are going to build today using Streamlit. Okay, and I'm going to use PyCharm, but feel free to use any other IDE such as Visual Studio Code. All right, everyone, I have created here a uh, new project using PineChar and we are going to start building the application. First, I'm going here to right click and go to new file and I'm going to call it requirements. The text. Yes, add to GitHub. So here I'm going to I'm going to add the required libraries, which are for sure OpenAI. Then we have Langchain and then we have Chroma, Chroma DB. Chroma DB is in memory vector database. For this application, I'm not going to use Pinecon, but feel free to use Pinecon as your vector database. I have already explained how to do that in my previous tutorial. 
For this tutorial, let's do something new. We'll use Chroma DP as in memory vector database. It's gonna make our application much simpler and we can do tests as much as we want. Also, I'm going to use Tick Token library and wikipedia library as well okay let's save and then we are going to go to the terminal and run the following pip install dash r requirements the text i think i have a spelling mistake yeah i have a spelling mistake here requirements.txt it will download now and install all the required library and with this it is done installed the required library let us now install a streamlet so we'll say pip install streamlet by this it is done now installing streamlet now in order to test if Streamlit is installed properly, so let us uh, run the default uh, project of Streamlit. So we'll go to st and type Streamlit hello. This command will open the default Streamlit application. As you can see here, this is the default one. It has some uh, an animation, plotting, mapping, and data frame. And if you go here to the setting, it has some setting here as well. One of them we can change from dark to light, depend on your preference. So by this we installed the acquired libraries and we installed Streamlit. Let us now start building our application. I'm going to add a new Python file here and I'm gonna call it chatapp.py. Okay. First we have to import streamlet as st then we are going to go to langchain and embedding dot open ai and import open ai embedding after that again we are going to langchain dot vector stores and import a comma so comma and then also we are going to import os all right, now we are going to use the functions that we created in, uh, in our previous application, which I showed you at the beginning of this uh, tutorial. I'm not going to explain it because it's already explained there. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going only to explain the Streamlit code. Okay, so first we have to, uh, to define a function to load document from Wikipedia, which is this one. All right, that uh, already explained before. Then we are going to have a chunking strategy. I'm copy and pasting from the Jupyter Notebook. After that, we are going to create embedding. In our, uh, in our, in our previous example, we used Pinecone, but here we are going to use uh, Chroma. So here we'll say define create underscore embedding and we are going to pass the chunks and then we are going to define a, an object called embedding which is equal to openai embedding then our vector store is going to equal comma dot from underscore documents and we are going to pass the chunks and the embedding and at the end we are going to return the vector store okay this is the only difference than uh, the previous example. Then we are going to use also the functions that calculate the cost so that we display the user how much is going to be the cost. And then we are going to use the function that will allow us to chat with Wikipedia. Okay. Here's the only difference than before. Instead of hard coding the value of K, I'm putting it here as an input argument. And the last function that we are going to uh, to define here is to uh, is a function to clear the history. The purpose is this of this function is uh, to clear the uh, streamlit session state history. 
For example, if the user chooses a different chunking strategy or if the user chooses different topic. So we are going to use a stream lake callback to call this function and clear the history. So I'm going to say define clear underscore history. And then we'll say if history in streamlet dot session state and then we are going to say delete session state history okay by this now we are, have uh, defined all the required function for our application now we are going to start building the interface using streamlet okay and I notice here we get an error langchain underscore open AI so here I'm going to say pip install langchain underscore open AI I forgot to add this here and yeah and the error is gone now we are going to define the entry point for our application so we'll say sorry if underscore name uh, equal main this is the entry point for our streamlet application we are going to import os and then we'll say from from dot nv import load underscore dot net environment and find dot net environment why we are doing this we are doing this uh, so because we are going to ask the user to enter his own open ai api key and after entering the API key, we are going to store it in the environment variable. And then we'll say load, find, and we'll say override, sorry, override equal to. Okay. For our application, we want to have at the top of the application, we want to have an image, a header, and text. Streamlet contains components like <clears throat> chart, widget, or table. With widget, Streamlet allows us to add interactivity to our app with the help of uh, buttons, sliders, select boxes, text inputs, and more. Okay, so if you want to add an image at the top, we'll say just simply streamlet.image, and then we have to pass the URL of the image. Here in our application, I added here an image folder, images folder, and I have a banner. So all I have to do here is pass, uh, pass to it. Okay, so this is how we add an image. And for adding a header, we'll say the same, simlet.subheader, and then we'll say chat app with Wikipedia. Okay, so by this we are going to have an image and a subheader. Let us run our application and test our code so far. So if we go here to terminal and we say stream let run and the name of our uh, Python script chat app.py. Okay, all right, so this is our application so far. We still did not write the full code, I'm just showing you where we are now. With every additional widget I'm going to add or component, I'm gonna show you what's happening here. Okay, let's change just the setting to dark mode, which I prefer. So if we go here from light and we chose dark, yeah, and close this one. All right, let's continue. So for our application, we want to have a sidebar and a main content. The sidebar, this is just to like divide our application to two parts, makes it user more user friendly to the user. Okay. I'm going to have here a sidebar where I'm going to ask the user uh, for the API key, the topic that he wants to talk about, the chunk size and the key value for similarity. And here in the content, uh, in the main page, in the body here, I'm going to add the search functionality or the chat functionality with Wikipedia. Okay, so let's go back to PyCharm and writing the code for this. So for the sidebar, I'm going to say here with uh, streamblade.sidebar. First, I'm going to have an API key variable, which is equal to streamblade.textinput. We are going to say the text open 
AI API key okay and the type is password for security okay when the user enters the value for the uh, open API key it will be stored in the API underscore key one more variable is the topic the topic that he wants to chat about also again it's going to go to streamlit.text input and here we are say please pick your topic from wikipedia okay then we are going to have the chunk size this time is going to equal to streamlit.number input will say the label is chunk size with minimum value of uh, 100 and the maximum value is 2048 and the default value is going to equal to 512 character sorry I did a mistake here and yeah uh, we have minimum maximum here yeah, here we are going to have the value is 512 and as I said before uh, Streamlate it has a callback function which are on change and on click so when the uh, chunk size change we want to call uh, the our clear history function here to clear the history so that uh, the user chat again so here we are going to say on underscore change clear history okay the next uh, variable is k which is equal to streamlate dot uh, number input we are going to make the label k and then for minimum value is going to be uh, 1 and maximum value 20 and the default value is equal to 3 just to make it faster and also we are going to have a callback function here to the clear history okay after the user enters the api key and the topic that he wants to load document about it from wikipedia and the chunk size and the value of k we are going to have uh, what's called a button to load the data from wikipedia okay so here we are going to add a new variable called underscore data is equal to streamblade.button and we'll say load data and on click we are going to clear history as well let us now check the uh, website and uh, let us now check our application make sure everything is working fine so anytime something must be updated on the screen streamlet rerun the entire python script from top to bottom this can happen in two situations whenever we modified our app source code or whenever a user interact with the widget in the app for example when selecting uh, when entering the an api key or when changing the chunk size okay streamlet would, will detect that the user and inter interacted with this widget and it will run the entire python script and because streamlet runs the script from top to bottom at every user interaction or code change it makes the development super easy but it also comes with some overhead which slows down the application. To avoid the running uh, time consuming code after every single action when nothing has really changed, Streamlit comes with a built in change mechanism. mechanism. To avoid the running time consuming code after every single action when nothing has changed, Streamlit comes with built in uh, caching mechanism that speeds things up. Caching stores the result of the function calls, so they only need to run once and it also keeps some persistence uh, object across reruns. This makes the app much faster. Okay, so let's choose now always a run. And I get an error here. Password is not a valid text. I believe I did a spelling mistake here. So here I have to put another word and save. And if we go back and it's working now here we have the open AI API key and we have here please choose your topic the chunk size and K and the load function now nothing will work if we click the load function okay 
let's continue so now after the user enter the API key the topic the chunk size and the key and press the load data button what we have to do is the following we have to first check if a topic is used and add underscore data is also clicked if he clicks add underscore data will return true and if he add the API key we're not checking the chunk size and the key because they have a default value if the user enters these values then we are going to call our load wikipedia function here which we uh, yeah this one here he's going we are going to call this uh, function and pass the query of the user to load the uh, documents using the wikipedia document loader okay so let's go back here and write the logic for it so we'll say if this one is true then we'll say uh, because the load is gonna take a little bit of time i'm going to use a spinner and luckily uh, streamlit has a, a spinner widget so we'll say with st.spinner we're saying loading documents from wikipedia okay So while the spinning spinner is running, we are going to do the following. First, we are going to os.environ and we are choosing API key is equal to API key. And then we are having data is equal to load, sorry, equal to load Wikipedia. And we are passing the topic and language. For now, it's hard coded English, but we can change it later on feel free to change it if you want okay then after loading the data we are going to you uh, to split the text into chunks using the function that we defined above and then we are writing we want to write a message to the user to show him the chunk size and uh, the length of the chunks how many chunks we have and each chunk size so we'll say Streamlit to try it and then we'll use a literal chunk size is equal to chunk size and chunks is length of chunks okay so we loaded the data from wikipedia we split it into chunks and we display the message to the user okay after that we want also display to him the uh, co z cost so if we go back here at the top, we had a function calculate and display embedding cost. This function will return the tot total token that we are going to use and the uh, the cost of it. Okay. So if we go down here, we'll say tokens is equal and embedding cost is equal to calculate and display embedding, and we are going to pass the chunks. Okay. So again, we want to display the embedding cost. So we'll use what we'll use st simulate to try it. Not talking. We'll display a message. Nice message. Have embedding cost is equal to embedding underscore cost. Okay, in dollars. And let's do some formatting here. Show just for uh, Okay okay so let's display the uh, cost for the user after that we have also the vector store is equal to create embedding the function that we uh, define here well to create the embedding using the comma okay comma vector store uh, we are using in memory embedding it also has a feature for persistence to store in a database as well Okay, so we passed here the chunks. So we have our vector store. And here one important thing, we want to save the vector store in the session state so that we will have a history of a chat for the user. Okay, we will see this later one. So we'll have simulate.session state. We are going to define a variable called vector store. Vector underscore store equal to vector underscore so and then we'll display a message to the user 
uh, simlet.success wiki media document loaded successfully okay all right let's save our code and check our uh, application we have an error here i forgot to put here a colon after the spinner so let's go back here and after the spinner here yeah. here we have to add a colon let's save and check the application again all right so for this i'm going to use my api key so let me just copy it so i'm using my api key here and the topic uh, let's say also samsung galaxy s24 ultra okay so let's now click load data and hope it will work so it's playing a message to the user the spinner here loading documents from wikipedia it displays a chunk size and uh, how many chunks we have and the estimated cost and we get a success message uh, wikipedia document loaded successfully by this we have the documents about samsung galaxy s24 ultra stored in a vector store in the session state for our application so now we are going to uh, add here the text box for the user to enter uh, his uh, query or his question and the text area to show uh, to show the history of his chat so let us continue now all right so now we are going to uh, add the ui element for the user to enter his question so we'll have a variable called questions equal to st text input uh, ask a question about your topic okay and if question if the user enter question we'll check first if vector underscore store in session state we'll check if the vector store where we created it here in the is in the section is in the session so we are checking if the vector store exists in the session store and then we have vector store equal to session state and dot vector store okay again here because we are going to call the function to chat with wikipedia it's going to take time so i'm going to use again here a spinner so we'll say with streamlined spinner we'll say loading the information okay and we'll add a colon here and then we'll have an answer is equal to chat with wikipedia and we are going to pass our vector store and the question and the k value okay all right so let me just scroll up a, a little bit scroll down so here we are going to have and then we are going to go to st.text area syntax area will say llm answer is equal to value which is answer dot re, not dot result okay answer result okay so by this we get the answer from uh, wikipedia and now we want to display the chat history to the user let us put a divider here i see the divider just to separate the answer from the history and then we'll say if history not in session sorry streamlet dot session state say streamlet dot session dot history is empty okay and then we are going to define a value which is equal to f question and then we are making a new line answer answer so we're going to display uh, all the question the question is at one line and the answer in the second line then we'll say st.session state.history is equal to value one line and then we are going here to this to add a separator not lines of value we'll say times 50 okay 
this is just uh, fine tuning the answer and we'll have uh, st the session state dot history okay after that we'll have edge is equal to us t dot session state dot history and then st dot text area is equal to chat history value is equal to h and key is equal to history and height let's say is equal to 500 all right by this we finish our application with just this few line of code okay we have tested till here let us save now our code and check the application let us now check our application i'm going to enter here my api key and for topic i'm gonna say samsung galaxy s24 i'm going to leave the default value for chunk size and k for your uh, testing and for your learning purposes try to change the value of k and the chunk size and try and ask question and check the result okay in real time in real life application you have to play with the chunk size and the value of the k to check the accuracy of the result you are getting all right and to also adjust the speed of retrieval the information okay wikipedia document loaded successfully all right so let's now ask our first question one was samsung galaxy s24 released okay and we get the answer here and it's displayed in the history okay which chipset was samsung galaxy s24 using use okay and we get the answer here it's using the qualcomm snapdragon 8 gen 3 and here in the chat history, we can see the chat history of uh, our previous question. Okay. If we click load again, it will clear the history. And uh, yeah, whenever we change these uh, values or we change the topic or say, or we click load data, it's going to clear the history. Okay. All right, guys, this is just a quick tutorial to show you how you can develop application for your uh, machine learning and data science project using Streamlit. I'm going to create an, another tutorial in the future, which will be only about Streamlit in details and explain the widgets. So if you want to get notified about the future video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. All right. And that's how you build a cool chatbot application using Streamlit and Langshin. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. Remember, the possibilities are endless when you combine these two powerful tools. At the end, thank you for watching and see you on the next tutorial.